is Audrey Lynch, and we're going to be discussing rebel writer John Steinbeck and rebel actor James Dean. And we're starting with a little scene from the movie East of Eden. Why? Because they met only once, but it was a very fateful meeting for both of them. This is where Ilya Kazan asked John Steinbeck, hey, shall I hire this unknown guy to play Cal? And John Steinbeck said, he is perfect, hire him. And that was the beginning of a legendary movie and a wonderful future for Steinbeck, Ilya Kazan, and James Dean. And here is a famous confrontation scene, one of the most famous scenes, where James Dean confronts his father, Raymond Massey, in the movie. Okay, what did these two men have in common? They seem so dissimilar. Well, in studying both their lives, I found they were remarkably similar, and it probably explains why both of them had that strong streak of rebellion. Here's Mrs. Steinbeck, John's mother. She was a teacher and quite a martinet. He grew up in a family with three sisters, the only boy, and so he was really the little prince of the household. And Mrs. Steinbeck always had great uh, hopes for him. And here's James Dean's mother, another totally different kind of woman, married at 19, not educated, and James Dean was her only child, and she made him her life project. By the time he was five, he was taking violin lessons, tap dancing lessons, and he used to say, by age five, I was already a prodigy. So those two mothers had decided that these only sons would be truly famous in the future. What about the dads? Is Mr. Steinbeck and Mr. Dean were very similar in that they were very good men. They were uh, proud of their sons, but also showed a lot of emotional distance. They came from an era when they felt providing financially for your family was the most important part of fatherhood. They also had great plans, but rather different from their sons. Mr. Steinbeck expected that when John went to Stanford, he would come out a lawyer or a doctor. And Mr. Dean had high hopes that his son, James Dean, would become a professional athlete, or at the very least, a wonderful coach or a lawyer. Well, instead, both young men became college dropouts. That wasn't the career path they wanted. And unfortunately, all their lives, they had a sense that they had disappointed their fathers. There's Mr. Dean. And here are some baby pictures of our two famous men. Uh, there's James Dean, and there's uh, John Steinbeck. You can see by the way they're dressed that they were definitely the apple of their mother's eye, the little princes of their family. And they also grew up in very rural towns, less than 3,000, both of them at that time. James Dean was a typical farm boy. Here he is with his prize sow. And here's John Steinbeck having a country life of hunting and uh, out in the woods, hunting and fishing with his dog. And here is what those towns look like, very small. And both men found them rather claustrophobic. They, were, they blended in in that they went to the local schools, they went to the local churches. In John Steinbeck's case, it was Episcopalian. In James Dean's case, it was a Quaker church the Bear Creek Friends Church. They did, they looked pretty much like all their neighbors, except that the minute they turned 18, they said to themselves, I'm out of here. They wanted to play their lives on a bigger screen than these small towns of Salinas, California, and Fairmount, Indiana had to offer them. There's Fairmount. Okay, what were they like once they left? Well, as I said, they were college dropouts, much to the disappointment of their families. Um, on the work front, when they began their careers, they were, to say the least, uh, rather difficult. And how had they been in school? Well, they weren't sensational students. They tended to act out. But one amazing thing is their English teachers really spotted their writing and speaking talents, and they encouraged them tremendously both in high school and college. 
So on the work front, they were difficult to be um, to deal with. For example, on the opening of Mice and Men on Broadway, it was naturally expected that the author, John Steinbeck, would be in, t in attendance. And he wasn't, and the director said he would never work with him again. On the opening of East of Eden, almost everybody was there, except for James Dean. He decided to spend the night with his friends instead. So they were difficult. And not surprisingly, their uh, romantic lives were a little bit different too. John Steinbeck was married three times. This is his third wife, Elaine. Lots of girlfriends, lots of starlets he dated. Uh, he did seem to finally find happiness with Elaine, who was his widow, um, but rather different for that time. Uh, James Dean had romances with both men and women, and there was a lot of talk about whether it was real bi bisexuality or whether it was career opportunities. The great love of his life, supposedly, was this young starlet, and that was a uh, that was his great love affair, but her mother objected and they never married. So her name was Pierre Angeli and she wound up marrying Victimone instead. Now, what were they like? They really shone and were always congenial when they were with, with their fans. Here's John Steinbeck surrounded by adoring fans. Here's James Dean surrounded by his adoring fans. And how did it all end? It ended tragically for James Dean, who was killed in an accident, a car accident near Paso Robles, California, only at the age of 24. John Steinbeck died at 68, and interestingly enough, the two bad boys came back home in death. They're buried in their hometowns, there were services at their churches, and they won even greater fame after their deaths. There were stamps dedicated to them, there were annual festivals to them, and in their hometowns, they finally found their glory. This is the James Dean Museum in Fairmount, and this $11 million edifice in Salinas is dedicated to John Steinbeck. And their graves are visited by thousands of people every year, and they continue to reap uh, fame even long after death. So that's the story of our two rebels.